welcome back to Roy on Rescue. This is the next part discussing compression only CPR. I really debated whether or not to try to get this in this week or not, but because of all of the material I've been reading, there are some really important things that I couldn't let wait until next week. So here it goes. I'm going to try to do it in as short and concise a way as possible. Compression only CPR is not brand new for 2010. This was something that was introduced back in 2008 in hopes to get more people who are not trained in CPR involved when they come across somebody who was in a witnessed cardiac arrest outside of the hospital in hopes that they would call 911 and start CPR compressions fast and hard in hopes to help the person survive this cardiac arrest event. This year though, the ILCOR release is really not that much different except for the fact that it has really been publicized and, and really has kind of actually started to be looked at as like it is going to take the place of traditional CPR and that it's actually better than traditional rescue breathing and chest compression CPR. Now I've scoured documents like crazy over the last 72 hours looking for hard science to back uh, this motion towards compression only CPR being done because one of the things that came to my mind and I, I read from another paramedic EMT um, that he had concerns about this as well and it's the idea that if we're not putting rescue breaths in and actually exchanging gases while we're compressing the chest and trying to circulate oxygenated blood around and get rid of carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide leading to a state of acidosis in the body, therefore changing the pH balance of the patient's blood and maybe keeping their heart from actually being able to be defibrillated into a, a normally beating rhythm. These were the, this was the basic concern that I had when we started talking about not just getting people involved that normally wouldn't get involved and were not trained, but when some of the language started to talk more about replacing traditional CPR, the 30 compressions, two breaths, or even something as, as um, radical which has been experimented with like 50 compressions and two breaths, replacing that with just fast and hard chest compressions, no rescue breaths, the concern I had was that we're just moving dead air space. Dead air space meaning the space between the trachea and the bronchial tree branches before they get in the bronchioles, before they get to the alveoli sacs where the gas exchange occurs. And there's study after study that shows that chest compressions really only moves a fraction of what the tidal volume is that we move in a regular respiration or even in a positive uh, pressure ventilation uh, and in a makeshift positive pressure um, ventilation like rescue breathing. So the point being here, I didn't really want to get gung-ho and start pushing this and jumping on it just parroting what other people are saying and talking about in regards to compression-only CPR being even better than old CPR if I didn't have the science and the, and the understanding to get behind it and believe in it. Because personally, my philosophy is if I don't think it's good enough to do to my, for my own loved ones, my wife, my children, my family, my friends, then why am I teaching it to you? And so I need to understand it before I can passionately teach it. 72 hours later, I have scoured a lot of documents and come to a very good conclusion of my own, which is still a little bit in progress, but at least I've got a big chunk of it, I believe, with my head wrapped around it. And I'd love to have your feedback, you experts in cardiovascular care, anesthesiology, resuscitation experts, so that I can understand Krebs cycle and gas exchange better with traditional CPR versus compression only CPR. But what I've pulled, I've pulled this. Compression only resuscitation, chest compressions without rescue breaths, has been proven in limited studies with animals and people to obviously be better than no CPR at all. Done deal, that's an easy one. Calling 911 right away and starting chest compressions and at least circulating some oxygen around the body's brain, the heart, the liver, the kidneys, ideally. Getting pulse pressures elevated with constant deep compressions instead of taking a break and letting the pulse pressures drop. I understand all of that. What I, my concern was is that if we replace rescue breathing and, and com cardiac compressions in like traditional CPR, is the person going to deteriorate into an extremely acidic state 
so that when the AED arrives, we won't be able to defibrillate the patient. And if that was the case, then obviously I would have to shed some light on that. However, the studies have come back and said in the first three to six minutes, compression only resuscitation efforts has actually benefited the recovery of a post-cardiac arrest patient. After that, the hemodynamics, the pH balance, the different enzymes and toxins and electrolytes begin to go out of balance. And the studies have shown that regular CPR, CPR that involves both fast and deep compressions at least 100 times a minute or more, together with good ventilatory rescue breaths, is what will help to stabilize the hemodynamics of the patient for the long haul and gives them a better survival rate. So we're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. We're not getting rid of regular CPR. And all along, I believe the problem has not been that CPR is too difficult. I believe that the problem is the delivery of the training and the retraining. That's why Pro Trainings and Pro CPR has pioneered the idea of frequent trainings weekly covering a two and a half to three and a half minute video segment every week to keep you fresh. And that's why over a half a million people has turn, have turned to Pro CPR and Pro Trainings and, and chose us for their free training online. Um, so, more to come on that. Compression only resuscitation or COCPR, which American Heart and some others are calling it, is better than nothing and is ideally suited for the person who's never been trained before and would do nothing if not for this. It's also good for the person who does not have a CPR shield with a one-way valve. Um, or we don't have training in bag valve mask with room air. And that whole thing we can talk about later. But so here's the whole thing in a nutshell. If you're not trained, you don't know what to do, call 911 if the person is unresponsive and does not appear to be breathing. Start chest compressions in the center of the chest at least 100 times a minute. That's more than one a second. That's almost two a second. So it's very fast and very exhausting. So pace yourself and ideally incorporate other bystanders to help take over every two minutes switch off and on to keep up good chest compressions. And then when help arrives or an AED arrives, place the AED. You no longer have to have formal training to do it. You can go out to ProCPR.org and click on the video training library. Click on AED and learn how to do an AED right now. We're going to be updating the standards for that. All these standards are going to be updating on our, on our training video but it will at least help you to know what to do in a crisis. If you know how to do CPR, do traditional CPR. Get your CPR key rings. You can buy them right on our website if you need them or find them for free somewhere else. It doesn't matter, but we're just saying you can get them. Have them on your keychain so you have personal protective equipment available so you can give the good um, oxygen-giving ventilations along with the cardiac compressions. Again, more to come on that, but chest compressions only is, is very good for those who cannot give rescue breaths or do not have training. And so I hope this was helpful. Um, I'd love to discuss this further. I was trying to get this in as short a time frame as possible. It's already eight minutes, 35 seconds, so it's long. But that's what it is. I hope it helps, and more to come very soon. From Roy on Rescue, this is Roy Shaw. Have a great weekend. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.